Merry Christmas. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I'm Pastor David Rose now, and I thank God to spend this time together with you in his word. What a message he has for us on this Christmas day. God bless our time in his word. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only Son in the flesh may set us free from our old bondage under the yoke of sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message are these two short verses from Luke chapter 2, the account of our Savior's birth, verses 19 and 20. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. God bless our time in this word. Lord, open now my heart to hear, and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word, ere pure, retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. He was so well known by what he did that at the mention of his name, what came to people's minds was his big white beard, his white wavy hair, and he will always be remembered for what he wrote one special Christmas day. Do you know the story behind Henry Wadsworth Longfellow? Or the story behind his big white beard? Or what motivated him to write the poem he called Christmas Bells? The poem that became the well-known Christmas carol, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Or what any of it has to do with Christmas, and not just the date of Christmas on the calendar, but the true joy of the God who kept his promise who took on human flesh and made his dwelling among us so that by all he has done for us, we might live with him in heaven. Longfellow was born in 1807. He married a young woman named Mary Potter when he was 24 years old. Only four years later, Mary died after a miscarriage. It took Longfellow 12 years before he would marry again and settle down in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And God blessed their home with six children. Tragedy struck again when Henry and his wife Fanny lost one of those little ones. Outside their home, rumors of a civil war added to their heartache and uncertainty. When the civil war broke out in 1861, the Longfellow household was forever changed. Fanny was working on a beautiful summer day with a candle to seal a lock of one of their daughter's hair in wax for a memento. She didn't notice that some drops of melted wax had fallen onto the bottom of her dress that dragged along the floor. The summer breeze through the open window 
fanned that hot wax on her dress into flame and she was quickly engulfed in fire. She ran into Henry's study and he picked up a small rug and tried to put out the flames with that. That didn't work. So he took her into his arms in a desperate hug to try to put out the flames with his own body. Fanny passed away the next morning. Henry had been burned so badly that he couldn't go to her funeral. His face was so scarred that he couldn't shave again. So he let his beard grow to cover over the scars and the painful memories that came with them. But the beard could not cover over the pain. The first Christmas after her death, he wrote in his journal, how inexpressibly sad are all holidays. One year later, he wrote, I can make no record of these days. Better leave them in silence. Perhaps someday God will give me peace. On Christmas Day in 1862, he wrote, A Merry Christmas, say the children, but that is no more for me. In the spring of 1863, his oldest son, 18-year-old Charles, left home without telling his father. He was headed to Washington, D.C. to join President Abraham Lincoln's Union Army to try to help end the war. He narrowly missed the Battle of Gettysburg because he came down with typhoid fever, but he was severely wounded in a later battle. A bullet narrowly missed his spine. When they sent him home, he wondered if he would live, and if he did, if he would be paralyzed. At one point, Longfellow was so consumed with grief and pain that he feared he might go insane. But his son did live, and his son was not paralyzed. Abraham Lincoln was reelected, and there was talk and hope of an end to the war that was devastating the country and the families in it. But the greatest change happened in Longfellow's heart. When he remembered on a Christmas day the announcement of the angels to the shepherds of a different kind of peace that God had promised and delivered on a Christmas long ago. And on a Christmas day, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow sat down and wrote of hope that triumphs over loss and hurt and devastation and of a peace that this world would never know unless God sent him to be born in it. These are the words he wrote on that Christmas day when he remembered what God had promised and what God had done. I heard the bells on Christmas day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing, on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Young Mary had heard of God's promise, too, that one day God would send the offspring of a woman to crush the serpent's head for the sin and devastation he brought into God's perfect world. Mary waited for the Messiah who would come to rescue his people, 
Israel, to rescue all people, not just from a war between two opposing people in the same country, but a war between them and the devil that they could never win, to rescue them from the darkness of sin that covered the land and the hearts of the people in it, for the king who would rule on David's throne with righteousness and justice forever, for the child who would be born of a virgin, born in Bethlehem, called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He would be called and he would be great, the Son of the Most High. She believed everything he had said, but she could have never dreamed or imagined that God would send his angel Gabriel to tell her that God had chosen her to be any part of his fulfillment of that promise that the child she called Messiah and Lord, she would also call my son. With all the world a mess around her, away from home, away from family, she held her hope, her peace, her salvation, Emmanuel, God with us in her arms. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. Angels filled the nighttime sky and told terr terrified shepherds, Go, see with your own eyes. Christ, the Savior, is born. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. They went, they saw, they believed. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Dear Christian, we too have heard and seen God did everything he said he would do. God will do everything he says he will do. The mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, did come and did bring us peace. Peace with God through sins forgiven. Peace with God through the hope of eternal life with him in glory. Peace with God through the assurance that all all that through all that happens in this life, he is still God with us. Peace with God through the confidence that just as surely as those shepherds saw him that starry night in the stable, we too will see him with our own eyes in heaven. And I can guarantee you, because of God's promise, that it will be just as we have been told. Amen. I'm going to offer a special prayer for it this day, and then I'll invite you to join together with me, and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. We pray. On this holy day, dear Father, we rejoice to hear the good news of great joy that a Savior has been born for us. For fulfilling your prophecies and in the fullness of time sending your Son to be our Savior, we give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. What a great mystery of our faith this is, that God has become fully human for our salvation. Even though he is the all-powerful Lord of all, he is wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Help us always believe that this precious child was born as our substitute to be our Savior. In the midst of our joy, we grieve for the many people in our world who do not know that Jesus has come to bring them forgiveness and healing. As the shepherds spread abroad the good news of the birth of the Savior born for all the world, may we also make use of the unique opportunities this holiday presents to tell others of what we have seen and heard concerning this child. Grant that the true peace between God and fallen mankind may comfort all people. As the angels sang out their praise, move us also to sing out our praise to you today and every day as the joy of Christmas remains in our hearts. For all of this and more, we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Merry Christmas. Maybe you're watching this and it's the day after Christmas or two days or three days after or a week after, maybe a lot longer after. It's good with me because the truth of this remains no matter what day the calendar says. So I thank God to gather with you to be fed and strengthened by this familiar yet always joy-filling word. God kept his promise. He said he would send a savior and he did. That changes everything for you and for me. Maybe you know somebody that doesn't know this yet, what God has done for them by sending his son. Will you please help me tell them? Maybe you can share a link to the YouTube service with them and ask them to subscribe. Maybe if you'd like, you can send me an email. It's davidrosenow at gmail.com. And give me just your first name, last name, and your email address, and I'll include you on my weekly email, and you'll get a weekly reminder of the service each, each time it's posted. Either way, I know God is at work through his word here and all over the world to make this incredible announcement as he did that night to the shepherds that today a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. God bless and keep you in his care. Remember, through all that's going on, the Lord is in charge, and he will guide all things for our good and for the good of his church. Lord willing, I'll see you real soon.